everyone. Uh, this is okay. Can can we have the slides up, please? <coughs> so this is a very ignored, but a very important, uh, you know, topic in today's uh, day and age of uh, today's uh, digital day and age. You know, there are so many people on the internet. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Gopal referred, uh, showed us uh, the landscape of India from an internet standpoint as well as global. So, uh, you know, almost 900 million people online. This small device that we have in our pocket is kind of made all the change. So, in fact, uh, a fun fact, you know, I started my, I pivoted to digital in 2008. Can anybody guess the number of internet users in 2008 in India? You know, it was only 20 million users. I remember those, uh, those early days. And we've come a long way from that. And uh, social media, specifically, uh, has actually given the power of content creation in the hands of a common man. And not only professional content creators. You know, another fun fact that I would like to highlight is, uh, would you want to guess, you know, on social media, it's a feed environment, how much do you scroll in one year's time? Just make a wild guess, guess, and I'm sure you'll be wrong. It's two marathons, 52 kilometers. That's a long, long uh, way, right? So, so, you know, this scenario has uh, brought us uh, to this juncture where there is content being produced. A lot of content is being produced. So it's a double-edged sword for marketeers because for a brand, if you are, uh, uh, if, if your ad or your brand is associated with uh, misaligned or negative content, it could be a disastrous res recipe for your brand because the money that you spend will not work for you, it will work against you. You know, hence, uh, as marketeers, it becomes uh, our responsibility to ensure, to protect our brands from this disastrous uh, mishaps. So, uh, as marketeers, you know, we're always entrusted the responsibility of spending the brand dollars as cost effectively as possible. But while uh, in that madness or in that bargain of looking good in front of your manager, your organization, we often tend to forget the difference between being cheap and being reasonable. And these concepts were taught to us as when we were small kids. So today, we will uh, discuss the linkage of chasing low-cost CPMs and its, its, its linkage with misaligned content. And hence, I ask this question, low-cost CPMs, but at what cost? At the cost of uh, associating with low-quality uh, low uh, content? Or at the cost of brand depreciation and not depreciation? Right? So, uh, uh, we're all, uh, as a brand, we want to spend our dollars to get the maximum amount of bucks and for these dollars to kind of work for us. But what happens if it works the other way around? It, not only the money is wasted, but also uh, uh, it works for our competitors. Your brand goes down, your competitor brand takes all the advantage. So hence it becomes res the responsibility of us as marketers in today's days, day and age to safeguard our brands from this mishap. Let's go through a few scenarios, very interesting ones. We are all guilty of the fact that when the kid cries, we give this phone to that kid, uh, and the kids are very smart nowadays, you know. Uh, one and a half years old, know the YouTube app icon, they flash it up and they know how to watch cartoons and most nursery rhymes. Usually what happens, the login on the phone is of the parents. So, uh, in a behaviorally targeted world, you know, the persona signals which are given to the phone or any ad server tells the ad server to uh, uh, display ads which are relevant to, relevant to the parent. But uh, how about when, you, when a kid is watching a uh, nursery rhyme and a finance ad is appeared, uh, is displayed, is it, is it a line? Absolutely not. Rather, you know, I would show a candy ad because that would somewhere lead to increase in the purchase intent and the kid might tell the parent, buy, buy me that candy. 
let's take it uh, let's look at another scenario how about your alcohol brand and your ad uh, shows next to religious content you know this is a very practical scenario i can tell you at channel factory uh, because we've got all content mapped and categorized and we do something called as a content analysis for your past campaigns you know we take your placement reports and we run it through our tech and uh, for one of the alcohol brands we saw a significant chunk of impressions were served uh, on spiritual content you know this could be a perfect disaster uh, a recipe of a disaster for your brand because you know in a emotional and a sentimental country like india it would not be taken in the right spirit in the subconscious mind uh how about your luxury fashion brand and your ad appears next to bhojpuri videos possible it's very possible because again you know i might be a uh affluent industrialist from bihar all the signals tell me okay show him a luxury uh, product ad but i might be uh, uh, watching a bhojpuri video at that instance you know this combination does it at all solve any of the brand purpose it absolutely does not solve the brand purpose let's take the last example of you being an auto uh, or a car manufacturer and your ad comes right next to car crash content uh, you know in, in in all probabilities these kind of crash or accident videos will be categorized under the auto category because the kind of tags that you will have will be hashtag uh, car hashtag accident and uh, what is the after taste you know in the subconscious mind that this kind of a uh, association will leave you know next time i see that ad somewhere my mind will tell me okay okay uh, the crash it will remind me of the crash so hence uh, hence i uh, so I, I, any of the content that i showed you is this anywhere violating any of the platform policy it's absolutely not because it's not hate speech it's not sexually provocative content it is not overtly violent and hence uh, 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 but still you know it's not very very conducive for a lot of brands to be associated with such content and hence i say that everything that is brand safe is not brand suitable because uh, you know brand safety is an extreme term brand suitability is uh, a very relative term so in the quest of a lot of times in a quest of only saving cost or running after low cost cpms we somewhere tend to forget this point one of the studies that we did along with group m in the us in 2021 showed us that uh, on an average 28% of the impressions which are served are served on misaligned content so the question that i ask here is so are the perceived low cost cpms really low cost we shall uh, see that I, i'll give you an example with maths on it how how, how does this equation work so uh, let's take for instance youtube you know youtube today is one of the largest ugc ecosystems it is a ecosystem it's a creator economy rather where creators earn money out of the platform running ads on them so as a creator you know what is my mindset i everybody wants to maximize the revenue right everybody is in the business of investing their time and these people are creating content and putting it out so uh, i want to maximize the views on my videos which will in turn give me more money so hence and, and also the fact that anybody can become a creator today you know uh, 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 you can add in a jiffy uh, create a channel you just need a video a headline a description and a, a few tags and you're up there your 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 your, your content is uh, open for the world to kind of watch youtube screens it for violations like i referred to earlier as well hate speech overtly the uh, violent content bloodshed etc and they take it down uh, they also give some uh, to an extent the brand safety levers for advertisers to kind of uh, leverage and these are based on 
keyword mapping of the inputs by creators, right? So uh, don't get me wrong, YouTube is a huge opportunity for advertisers. Uh, and it's a very, very complex one. But like every other platform, you know, the way to leverage any platform is very different. So for example, any social ecosystem, it's a feed ecosystem. So over there, your ads need to be thumb stopping because the opportunity time which is available in a social environment is very, very less. Similarly, for the YouTube ecosystem, it's extremely important that you align with the right kind of content because any alignment with misaligned or negative content will have detrimental or negative brand effects. Uh, so YouTube does uh, behavioral targeting very well, right? They say Google knows more about you than you know about yourself. But when it comes to, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, things like, uh, you know, contextual targeting and brand suitability, YouTube has come up with this partner program called YouTube measurement program, right? Not a lot of people know about it, but it does exist. So what is uh, YTMP as we call it? Uh, it was created to offer an array of trusted independent solutions and driving and measuring marketing performance and understanding content trends on YouTube. So uh, what does a YTMP badge mean? A YTMP badge means that a s array of independent technology providers have been carefully witted and uh, meets YouTube standard. It also means uh, that uh, YouTube considers it to be trusted business partners for providing certain different kind of solutions that uh, these uh, companies uh, offer. Okay. Channel factory. Okay. Channel factory is a badged YouTube certified badged YouTube measurement program partner. So what happens when you become a YTMP partner? When you become a YTMP partner, you've got access to expanded APIs. You know, everybody's got an API of YouTube, every creator has. But the quota of that uh, 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 API, you know, is really, really big for certain partners. To be able to pull tons of data, process it, and create value for the YouTube advertising ecosystem. So I come to the point where I ask that, can this misalignment problem be solved? I think it absolutely can be solved. Uh, by virtue of using certain technologies, AI and ML based technologies, like Channel Factory has a technology called ViewIQ. You know, so what does ViewIQ do? It, it, it pulls tons and truckloads of data from YouTube. Uh, what a lot of other service providers in this domain do is they scan through videos only based on inputs from creators. And the mindset of creators is they want to maximize their views. They will put any and every tag which enables them to get views. On the contrary, Channel Factory VOIQ not only considers the meta tags or the title description as well as tags, but also reads through what's actually going through in the video. Uh, with the help of one is video transcription. You know, you can listen through what's going on, convert it to a text and, so, uh, and save it in your servers. Computer vision. Computer vision is enabled by AI enabled image recognition systems. There's a very important factor called, uh, which is uh, sentiment analysis. So it's very important to be associated with the right kind of content where people are liking it and what are the people commenting on it. It, it does a sentiment analysis and last but not the least, it also uh, uh, takes into account the production quality. So we ingest this data in our servers, run sophisticated AI and ML algorithms on that with a view of doing two things. One, you know, categorizing all of content. And just to give you the gist of the scale, YouTube has got 17,000 years of content. I'm saying years, not hours, right? So you can imagine. Uh, we ingest this much of data and we categorize into different categories as per IAB standards and also label them as suitable and unsuitable to GAM standards. So GAM is Global Alliance for Responsible Media. Okay. So
sorry, the slide is not changed. My bad. Okay. So uh, let just go through a study that we did with uh, uh, Magna Media Trials in 2021, where uh, you know across the globe there were around 5,000 respondents, and uh, some of them were showed ads in good or standard content, and some of the other ones were shown ads in misaligned or bad content. So it very very clearly came out that. Uh, the, the people to whom ads were shown in standard or good content had a very, very positive impact on the brand matrix. And it was the, absolutely the other way around where misaligned content ensured that the matrix were either not as good or they actually fell down. So what we found out, while brand respect and brand trust fell down for misaligned content, there was a huge negative delta on the purchase intent as well as brand quality perception for misaligned content. So a lot of money which was spent on uh, misaligned content worked negatively actually for the brand. So let's run it through a few numbers so that we can easily comprehend it when I say that okay low cost CPM and how is it detrimental for uh, advertisers at large. So let's just say your CPM is 100, which actually means that uh, you've served 1,000 impressions uh, to users. And a few slides back, I showed you a study where it showed on an average 28% of impressions are uh, served on misaligned content. So out of that 1,000, 280 is out. Rather, it's not out, it's, it's not only wasted. They work negatively for your brand, right? So now we recalculate the entire equation, uh, keeping in mind 1000 minus 280 is equal to 720 and the cost is still uh, 100. The matrix that I call out here is the quality impressions, a quality CPM or QCPM. So what it turns out, while you're perceiving the CPM to be 100, it's not actually 100 because the 280 impressions that you've served is not on the right content which is not only wasted but has actually worked negatively for you, your QCPM turns out to be 138. Hence, uh, you know, the low cost CPM is a huge illusion. It's, it's, it's only an illusion on the report, Excel report that you're calculating. Because in reality, what has happened is 280 impressions have been wasted out of that and uh, you've actually paid more for the impressions uh, which have worked for you. Hence, uh, uh, I say that uh, low CPMs or chasing only low CPMs without considering, okay, what, are the, what is the content that you're being associated with? It comes at the cost of campaign efficiency, which is, it's an underlying thing. It doesn't come out in Excel, but it's the reality. You know, so I conclude with uh, this saying from uh, David Ogilvy, who understood it long time back that no matter how good your creative is, you know, if you don't serve the ad at the, to the right audience in the right frame of mind, in, in fact, what he wanted to say, right frame of mind has a direct linkage with the type of content that you're associating with it. All the money that you'll spend will go down the drain. Thank you.